Hello and welcome to the February 20th, 2024 Select Board meeting. The board is present minus Tom. Um, we have the town manager, the town clerk, various members of the public and town departments. Uh, let us stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We have our approval of our meeting minutes from February 6th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. A second motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, first public comment. Anybody here for a public comment? Save my mind from Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have no public hearings, no reports of committee, no department reports. Uh, appointments. Uh, Julio Marscal, is that how you pronounce it? Yes. And Kate Marscal wish to be appointed to Envision Berwick for a two year term. <laughs> this is not a recent. <laughs> no, this is our initial, correct? No, it's an initial. Yep. yep. Well, please come up, tell us about yourself and why you want to join Envision Berwick. Uh, my name is Julio Mariscal. I am, I've been here for about three years now. Moved up from Ohio. Uh, my wife and I have four kids in the Noble system. She's a school nurse. I coach basketball. Looks like probably girls lacrosse also this coming season. Um, <laughs> I've been, I met up with Jeremy and all the rest of the, the group here of Envision Berwick. I won't go through everybody, but um, reached out to them when we moved here. And I'm like, hey, we want to get involved in the community. We know what our communities have done back home. We want to help this community grow. We know what it can be. So here we are. Sure. Are there any questions? I'll entertain a motion. Can we do this a joint motion, Patty, or do you need them separately? Is Kate here? She should be walking in. Okay. <laughs> Separate, please. Um, I'll make a motion to appoint Julio Mariscal to a two-year term to Envision Berwick. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. And um, yes, Envision Berwick is the absolute best way to get involved with the community as a base level start. You don't want to do the elected route. You know, it's a great way to get involved that way. Please. They have 100%. many different options too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Burr for a lifetime, community gardens, those are all great places. Are you Kate? I am, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> My no. brother's in town. I had to drop him off first. No worries. Please, <laughs> tell us about yourself and why you want to join Envision Berwick. Oh, um, so my name is Kate Mariscal, and I am the nurse at Knowlton Elementary. Um, we have four kids, and um, I want to join because I want to make progress and change and be part of it as it happens and just um, be a hand in the town and as it changes and grows. And yeah. Any specific changes you want to make? Um, I would love to see downtown Berwick more vibrant. I would like to see more people on the streets um, and just being part of the community and events that happen downtown and everyone kind of getting together more, um, which I think is happening and it's on its way and it's just really exciting that it's getting there. Sorry, my glasses keep fogging up. <laughs> um, but I feel that there's a lot of passion here um, and a lot of community. And I would love to um, just, yeah, see it grow. Do you thicker. live in the downtown area? We live, um, no, we don't live in the downtown area. But that's one thing that I miss from our old town. We're from Ohio. Um, is that we had a lot of downtown community events. So we had like a chocolate walk and we had um, 
of course, I can't think of any other walks right now, but <laughs> they would do like a movie downtown and things like yeah. that. And so it was events that were free to the community that we would pull together. And it really made us be part of each other's lives. Mm -hmm. And it's those moments that we look back on and that really brings our old downtown to us and our old home. It gives us all of those memories. And I want my kids to have those memories. And I want the kids that I take care of at school to have those memories. And so um, I feel like with Envision Berwick, it's putting those steps into place and um, really just providing community and memories for the generations to come. Terrific. I'll make a motion that we approve Kate Marsco for a two-year appointment to Envision Berwick. A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? One more board. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> it is funny, like when I when I lived in Portland, there was one day I like looked out my window and it was like a crowd of people. They were just broadcast. They were just showing like The Incredibles on the side of a building. <laughs> like a bunch of people were just hanging out there watching it at like seven o'clock at night. Be a lot of fun. All right. The, 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 the presentation changes to the <coughs> LUO land use ordinance for the June 11th warrant. I'm going to come, gonna come back to this. Get I guarantee you he messed up the date since they got off cycled on weeks. I can, I can cover them. <laughs> it's up to you. If you want to table it, we can move. But, you know. We ought to wait until the chair. That's who you're waiting for, right? The chair, yeah. See if he comes later today, but right. yeah, we have to do it tonight. Oh, right. for the to get it on the. Mm -hmm. I see. Or, um, well, we can move it on the agenda and see if. Yeah, yeah we, we can them? we can table it until other business. Text, text them, text them and let's say yeah, hey, he's we're right down the road. He'll come down. Yeah, <laughs> he's local. Right. We'll we'll table that for for other business and see if it uh, comes back up. All right. Don't go too far. You're up next. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so no left. unfinished business. Town manager report. So as you can see from outside, the generator installation began last week. They're running electricity from up down to cross into the boiler room. That's going going well. Um, also related, we tested our internet backup. And that was successful. So now we have an internet backup if Comcast goes down. Um, also, again, with the generator during storms, we're going to be much more resilient as a town and community. Uh, I have been in discussion with property owners uh, to acquire land for the public works expansion. Uh, I plan on having that amount for the next meeting. That's something I'll have to go for town vote. So um, working on expanding uh, <coughs> two to three bays for public works, make some room for the trucks and be able to store equipment on you. The larger plows? Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's all I have for now for an update. Any questions for the town manager? All right. Uh, no select board communications, approval of counts payable. <coughs> we have a payroll warrant number 56 from February 15th, the amount of $80,802.57. We have an accounts payable warrant number 58 from February 20th, in the amount of $158,395.02. We have accounts payable warrant number 59 from February 20th in the amount of $50,688.33. And a payroll warrant number 57 from February 22nd in the amount of $82,342.60. I make the motion that we pay our bills. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Bills paid. All right, uh, new business, internal control systems documentation policy revision. Do you want to introduce that? Or you... um, this is something Lisa Vargas and I worked on to update because of the new bank. Um, we had to change how we do deposits, just little tweaks. We found a few um, typos and other things that needed to be 
updated with the policy, but basically it was because of the new bank that we contracted with. Yep. So we have to update the policy. And so you have a copy with um, track changes on it so you can see what was changed. Were there any major changes, anything big? That no, here? it's basically now we have a courier service for the deposit, so I no longer bring it to the bank. Oh. That's about the biggest change. Lisa, can you think of anything else? Yeah. yeah. So they come and pick it up? Yep. Only cash. Lisa now does the checks through a uh, machine. Yeah. So. Any other questions about the internal control policy changes? No, I didn't see anything other than a few typos here. I will make the motion that we approve the changes to the internal control policy. No second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Request to close customer service on March 5th, 2024 for the presidential primary election. Yes, again, all staff on board upstairs, hoping for a big turnout. Fingers crossed everyone come to vote, please, <laughs> 8 to 8. Well, it might be. Hopefully it will be. Um, so I have my staff scheduled upstairs for the day. Okay. I make a motion that we close the customer service on March 5th, 2024, um, so that staff can assist with the presidential primary election. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. There. Uh, you have your staff. Now, select board to set polling hours for March 5th, 2024, presidential primary election. <coughs> the town clerk re recommends 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You yeah. don't want 6 a.m. anymore? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, set the polling hours for the March 5th primary at 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Patty, do you still um, need the assistance of volunteers? So we're all that? set for this one, but always looking. Okay. For the presidential, she'll need about 12 more bodies. Yes, so. I will. All right. So anyone interested in volunteering can contact you? Yes. Great. Or Val, my deputy. Or, okay, I'm a deputy. I'll probably do that. I guess another Thank reminder, we chose to move our meeting to the 13th. That <laughs> yeah. uh, That's what I was double checking. I'm like, did I put that in the <laughs> yes, calendar? That we chose it? Yes. <laughs> no quick claim deeds. Uh, abatements. What do we got today? Hey, Paul. Oh, you're still muted. Can you hear me? Yep. 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 Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, we have one abatement application. Uh, it's regarding um, 184 Blackberry Hill Road. It's map R064-4-2. Uh, the owner of the property um, filed the abatement uh, in response to a large increase in his land valuation. The property is an, inact is an active farmland property and land had been held in, and land is also held in open space. Um, upon review, we discovered that the total parcel acreage was incorrect and an acre had been added to the property in error. Additional adjustments were made in, um, while reviewing the property, which resulted in a reduction of value from $206,000 uh, $206, to 176300 a difference of um, $29,700. So we're recommending an abatement be granted in the amount of $544.10. Any questions for the town assessors? No. I'll make a motion to grant the abatement of $544.10 to map lot R064-4-2. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right, I think that's everything, Paul. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a good evening. You too. All right. Now, we're back to second public comment. Nope. All right. Uh, Any word about going back to the... Oh, yes. yes. Other business, non-agenda items? 
Yeah, he's coming. He's, he's coming? coming? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, I should have asked questions of Paul. Made him talk longer. <laughs> <laughs> what is an abatement? Um, <laughs> but before we get to that, we do have one other piece of business. There is a lease proposal that needs to be uh, voted on. This is for a truck that we previously approved how many years, years ago? Two years ago. And is now finally available. Uh, so I do have to read all of this. So it'll, it'll be nice and slow, I promise you. So, all right. All right. So uh, essentially, uh, this is my motion to approve this that a capital acquisition project consisting of the lease of a 2023. Western Star single axle truck with associated accessories and equipment is hereby approved, and that the financing for the project in the principal amount of $280,652.82 is awarded to Andrew Scoggin Bank at an interest rate of 6.49%, and that the town manager slash treasurer Clerk or chair of the psych board are authorized to execute the municipal lease purchase agreement, lease number 53240003050, and all other documents reasonably necessary to accomplish the, uh, the propose of uh, this vote, and that the psych board hereby confirms its determination that the term of the lease does not exceed 120% of the economic life of the project. That said lease is hereby designated a bank-qualified tax-exempt obligation of the town for the 2024 calendar year under the provisions of Section 265B3 of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended. Is there a second? (laughs) I'll second that. And thank you, Noah. Uh, Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Now, going back up, changes to the LUO for June 11, 2024 warning. Hi, Mike. Hi, good evening. Michael LaRue from Chair of the Planning Board. Um, so we had a bunch of changes. Um, I'll just start with the uh, definitions Affordable housing is uh, C definition in 30-A MSRA section, subsection 4364. Um, next is temporary structure, any structure that is used only temporarily for a maximum of 180 days is not permanently affixed to the ground or to any structure that is permanently <coughs> affixed to the ground. Steep slope. A slope having a 15 foot or a greater vertical rise over 100 feet of horizontal run or 15% slope. Um, dimensional requ- requirements on 6.3 uh, for notes. 14 is affordable housing developments that meet the re- requirements for 30-A MSRA subsection 4364 allowed to have a dwelling unit density of at least two and a half times the base density that is otherwise allowed in that location. 6.3.1 E, each subdivision shall be issued only three permits per year, even if the parent parcel is located in two or more zones, including overlay zones, unless the subdivision is served by public water and public sewer, on 7.8, off-street parking loading in the table for activity, affordable housing is added, and then the re- minimum required parking is two spaces for three dwelling units. Um, with 7.13 signs is just added agricultural signs. Um, with F, properly licensed home occupations shall be allowed not more than one. Official Business Directional Sign, OBDS. The OBDS must be permitted through the MDOT and comply with all OBDS requirements. Uh, Four is commercial signs are not allowed on utility poles. 
Uh, five is illuminated vehicle mounted signs shall be turned off when the vehicle is parked at their business location. Um, 8.1 campgrounds and tenting grounds on five. Well, on two, we struck out navigable rivers. On five, it was recreational vehicles and tent sites not within the boundaries of an approved campground or tenting ground shall be restricted to use between the months of April 1st through October 31st. All RVs shall be connected to potable water and shall either have an approved connection to the septic system or shall be able to be emptied periodically at an uh, approved disposal site. And then six, all RVs shall be closed and weatherized during the off season. Um, C, health and safety on one, it, we struck out the picnic table. So each recreational vehicle, tent or shelter site shall be provided with a trash receptacle instead of picnic table and trash receptacle. Um, then is the addition of dumpsters shall be in a fenced enclosure. On four, each campsite uh, we struck out shall and said may be provided with a ma masonry or metal fireplace, which shall be approved in writing by the fire chief. Um, 9.8.I, uh, the performance the uh, performance standards for conditional use and site plan review were stricken out with a C um, subdivision regulation amendments 11.8 impact to natural beauty aesthetics historic sites wildlife habitat rare nat natural areas or public access to the shoreline bee retention or open spaces and natural or historic features on four we struck out sufficient and put in a minimum of 15% of and then of undeveloped land to provide for the recreational needs of the occupants and or to maintain the scenic or natural beauty of the area and or protect the habitats and struck out the rest of that. On 12.3, wildlife habitat, rare natural areas of or public access to the shoreline with one, we change between five and 10% to a minimum of 15% of the area that the subdivision has open space um, and or to protect habitats. Open space should include the most sensitive resource areas of the property and should be designed in larger blocks of land, preferably as part of an integrated open space network laid out to the contigu contiguous with open space areas or of similar character, whether permanently preserved or not on adjacent parcels. Uh, new performance standard state law 11.18 farmland. All farmland within the proposed subdivision has been identified <coughs> excuse me, on maps submitted as part of the application. Any mapping of farmland may be done with the help of the local soil and water conservation district. Okay. All right. Thank you for presenting all that. Yeah. Uh, are there any questions <coughs> at this time about these uh, changes? I'll go first. <laughs> 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 I got it. Um, like, <clears throat> So planning board went back and forth on a lot of the changes in 6.3. Yes. So yeah. with in regards to small division and large subdivision, yeah. um, currently we're issuing three permits, but a small subdivision by definition is four or less lots. Right. Why not issue four permits to just have all the work done in that small subdivision, then have three homeowners come in be there for a year and have to deal with having a fourth house being built in their backyard. Mm, I, 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 it's a great question. Um, we've had several debates over that. I'm, I lean towards the tour, towards the line of four. Should we should be able to set the minimum to four, just because of the fact that it helps finish that subdivision, so it's less noise. It's not three houses coming in and then the last house coming in. So the other three new people have to deal with more construction and stuff like that. 
But um, as a majority, they we voted to keep it at three. Um, that's just how the planning board. After the so what was the reason? Um, to slow down growth. What? Did yeah. they get it for four? They got. They'll no, be able it's to build. always been three. Uh, right, but they'll be able to build four. They can build four still, yes. And they'll do all the infrastructure, right. most likely. You're right. And they'll come back and do one more next year. Right. And so everyone's going to have to listen to all that. Yep. Yep. We discussed that. So how does that slow down? Um, I how does it slow growth? In the. With the. Um, one of the ideas to kind of mitigate any um, externalities from doing that would, would be limiting it to minor subdivisions. But if you start, so if you just broadly went from three to four for conventionals, for any for major subdivisions, you're increasing the attractiveness of just developments in, in different areas. You, you could jumpstart develop, we could jumpstart development areas we don't necessarily want. But I think limiting it from three to four within, and keeping it the caveat of keeping it in just minor subdivision. That yeah. way you can well, that would be that all my whole, thing. If it's right. a four, if it's a four house subdivision, right? They gotta do it anyway, right? So why not just? Let but it, it also let well, James and I have talked about this before. It also goes by calendar year instead of issue permit year. So let's say like if you come in in November and file for the three, you come in January. You can get that fourth one, so it's just correct. The four. So why not it, just right? The, <laughs> and, that, and that's what I mean. So if you're going to start a project in October, and right. calendar year, yeah, good is for not you. If, you. if you're if you're going to start later in the year, good for you. <laughs> that's basically all it's saying. But well, okay. Um, we used to have a permit permit cap. So we had the permit cap of it was seventy at the time. But 70 was, you know, that helped stop growth. And eventually, we had people camping outside Town Hall. So it was repealed within a year. And then we replaced it with that three per subdivision. This is just Pardon. for minor subdivisions, though. Just, if you're giving them, if you're already getting it for four, why would we just give them permission to build three? No, the, the three is limited only to the... <coughs> Uh, three three subdivisions all. that are outside the water system, right? The water and mm -hmm. sewer system. Yeah. So it, it, if you if you're doing a subdivision that's within the water system, you could do ten in a year. Yeah, yeah. So it's really only that that's the limiting factor is the is if you're outside of the water district and the sewer district. Okay. But again, if you're doing a calendar year and I start the project in September. And I build the fourth house in January. Still getting it. Four or five. That doesn't still doesn't so, make any sense. So let me play that. Four. Let me play devil's advocate there. So the reason why issuing three versus four from the chair of the planning board was to slow growth. But if they're building on the water system, they can get all ten. So we're not slowing growth. Yeah, we're just slowing growth <laughs> so, in one area. Right. Which that's apparent with the people from the public hearing. The comments were basically that they wanted it to stay the same. And that that was also a determining factor. Um, and how come there's no one mention in here about you just said verbally is calendar year, but I don't see it in writing here. That's just more. That, that's just the. <coughs> that's just the, you know, the, the, the bigger permit rules. Okay. Mm -hmm. Regular permit rules. Yeah, that's not land use ordinance. That's just the, that's the permit rules, not the land use ordinance. Okay. This question might be for Patty. Are every one of these? On, are they going to be on the ballot separately, or is this no? It's, it's do one, one or all. Question: Do you approve the changes to the LUO, and then we'll have this <clears throat> on the info table. Um, I'll probably put it in all the booths for this election, in June. In June. Yeah. Well, I think we should March. do four. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. There's no reason. Week. No, too late for that. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, based on the fact that the, the public has come out and said that they don't want it to change, and the majority of the board is comfortable keeping it, that I think 
it might be best to keep it as it is for now and readdress it in this coming year um, in a more hands-on way. Uh, you know, actually have maybe like a hearing where we actually like propose changes and you know and get it straightened out. Because I, again, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I mean, it would it makes sense logically, um, especially since the limit on a small subdivision is four. But uh, I, I don't think that we're gonna be able to hammer out everything tonight and change what's already been presented. And, and we're basically we're not changing anything. We're just keeping it the same. So. Well, that's that's your option. No, well. As a select board, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That they, yeah. if you want to change something right now, is the time that you oh, I'm not you edit it. That you can't. Right. Okay. I'm not. I'm just saying that um, it might not be the best idea, especially when the town is already, when people have already come out and said what they want. Yeah. In in the public hearing, in that defense, it was only like four people, three That's people. That's more people than we get to. Whatever right. Meeting, right. So. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably the four people that always complain. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in a town of eight thousand, it's it's yeah. it's tough, you know. Like when only three to five people have opinions on things and don't well, know where to go. Well, I them. live in a subdivision, and having to listen to them come back, I've had to listen to it for three years. Mm. They come back each time. So it, it would be really, for the other um, residents, they just want to hear it one time. You don't want to keep continuing to come back. You right. have to hear that. And hopefully they wouldn't even be there at that time. Yeah. It's all just built at the same time. And then they yeah. sell it, you know. Right. So. It'd be different if it was three to six or three. To, we're talking three to four. Right. Yeah, I know. I mean, mm -hmm. But they've been approved for well, they can build four. Right. They can build. They can get one like in October and then one in January, so they're going to be able to get the four anyway. If you're arguing that it doesn't it doesn't matter one way or the other, then <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Because if you start in January, then you'd have to wait till January again. But it's just relative on timing. I'm thinking how I want to word this. Hold on. I think 6.3.1 should be changed to each major subdivision should be issued only three permits per year in each minor subdivision should be allowed for. That's my thought. And I think that is for the best interest of the residents in those buildings. Say that again? That 6.3.1 should be each major subdivision shall be issued only three permits per year and then each minor subdivision should be four. Is minor subdivision a defined? I believe that is what it is. Mm -hmm. the, it, it's the, it, it's yeah, it's the minor or major. Yeah. 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 We have That's two. what you're saying, yeah. Well, I know that's what we refer to it, but that's <laughs> no, no, that's that that's my yeah. no. I, th I think yeah. it is. It is, and and I think that is in the best interest of the residents and and those being around and those being built. If you think about even a butters to a new subdivision going in, you're not just talking about the three houses that have to wait for one more house. You're talking about those abutters that are next to that minor subdivision that are now going to hear construction for two years. It's loud. That it's going to feel lot. like it's a major subdivision going in. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm just seeing if it affects the 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 ending part with the public water and public sewer. No, I think we we'll stop it right at it. The right. even if. <laughs> I do. I do agree. I'm just looking to see if there's anything else. That's the only thing that sticks out, but that really does. Lisa? I support the change, yeah. Then I'll hear a motion. So it's mine. So I'll make a motion to add each major subdivision shall be issued only three permits per year, and in each minor subdivision shall be issued four permits per year, even if the parcel parent parcel is located in two or more zones, including overlay zones, unless the subdivision is served by public water and public sewer. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. 
Are there any other issues to take with the way we currently have it laid out? No, I, I really like the changes to 11.8 and 12.3. I think increasing that minimum of open space, um, especially when we talk about R2, R3, and going out there, and I, I really like the, putting that in the most sensitive area and trying to be continuous with other. I, I think a lot of what we've been trying to do at the comp plan is target that open space and get that defined line for our natural habitat so that that's going to be a protected corridor through town. So I, I think right. that's that's huge forward thinking there yeah. to help protect that. So thank you. Yeah, and I think on the, uh, the 8.1, the campgrounds, um, oh, yeah. kind of surprised that it's not required, <laughs> but I'm glad to see that it is where it's the wording has changed to which shall be approved mm -hmm. by the fire chief before they put up a <laughs> yeah. fire pit at these sites. I, <laughs> the uh, may be approved, but they shall be approved. Yeah, so I'm glad that was caught. Shall be restricted to use My between the My only question uh, is, is with this new change, is there any other section of the land use ordinance that refers back to the three permits per year that would also need to be changed in order? So there's no conflict. I don't. I don't think so. Okay. That's the only place it's 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 written in. Okay. Just let me, just yeah. make sure. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. If, if six point three one conflicts with you know seven fifteen or you know yeah. then we're, we're in trouble. Then we then we can set us up for failure. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion that we um, what are we doing? We're approving these to go on the warrant for the June election mm -hmm. with the additional edit. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As uh, I move that we. Uh, put the land use change, the land use ordinance changes to the warrant for the June vote as edited. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? You can go home now, Mike. Awesome. You're all Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for running down. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, all right. So, any other business, non agenda items that anybody wants to bring up? All right. Is that what these came in, or is that going to be under budget? That's budget. Okay. Um, all right, so we are going to essentially take a recess, do our budget review, come out of recess. We have a discussion of personnel that will, uh, an executive session that will come out of that, and a trend meeting from that point. Uh, no decisions will be made in budget review or executive session, so that won't be televised. Anything else? All right, let's go into recess so we can do the budget. That's right, I lied to you. That doesn't go to town manager.
Um, full-time wages, that's going down. We have the associate position, German position. We have that in the full-time wages. So we're just moving that to the part-time part -time wages. So that's why you see the difference in full-time and part-time. But this fiscal year 25 budget will include the full-time director and a part-time associate director. I guess my only question is nothing planned for equipment maintenance. So with um, the Telview server, it's being replaced. Okay. And that comes with a maintenance plan. Okay, so it's all part of one thing and we don't need anything yeah. additionally for it. Okay. And but you don't need equipment like purchases? Yes. Cameras, things like that? So the, the capital purchases are being made in this fiscal year. Okay. They're doing the uh, Jeremy actually probably you can probably explain it better than that. Our, our server at the moment is I mean, as it goes with all computer equipment, right? It it, it ages out very quickly. Um, and right now we're redundantly posting so that if we send a, a video, this meeting, out to Channel 95, we also then have to post on YouTube. We also, if we wanted to post on Facebook, would have to do all of those things separately. Our new server will send one video out, an HD video, it'll get knocked down to SD for Channel 95. All our media is then, you know, sent to its various places. It, additionally, something I'm excited to share is that we are getting a, uh, a first uh, uh, streaming platform on Roku. So we'll have oh, a Roku cool. channel cool. so that that will be dedicated. And um, if that's successful, then we can look at you know Apple TV or any of the other you know iOS. What does it cost for the Roku channel? Uh, I think it's about seven grand gets us there for that and that's all in it's like the one time fee the setup and then you know it's it's paid forever and it's it's ad, it's going to be ad free right it's not gonna yes of course okay. yeah cuz i I've, I've gone through Roku TV and seen things and then they pump in ads in the middle of stuff and it's not going to be like that right no there's a couple of, I've downloaded on Roku a couple of um, local New England uh, community access apps mm -hmm. and they're all ad free the, uh, the, the, it, it, it won't be like YouTube, where like YouTube stores everything for free. We can keep, you know, videos going back to to the turn of the century, yeah. uh, and they're not going to pull them down essentially because the space is infinite. It's not that way with Roku. We will only have a certain amount of space on Roku, but there will always be our, our most current stuff. Gotcha. Okay. And we'll still have them on YouTube. Yes, of course, absolutely, and then some. With BCM, they have a fund balance, so in the case there needs to be a capital purchase in the, the next fiscal year. That's they, what I'm thinking. Okay. You need a microphone. Just, you need to. I mean, cause you got to go out there and record out. this stuff. They would have. They would have the funding in their fund balance to yeah. purchase anything like that. Laptop. Okay. Well, uh, there's also three places for equipment. There's equipment purchases, equipment maintenance. And yeah, then I saw equipment. that. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> maybe that should be streamlined a little bit. I mean, at the moment, we do have several cameras, and, and two of them are the ones we use all the time. They're absolutely operational. It's also worth noting that, you know, all of us has a camera <laughs> in our pocket yeah. that's just more powerful than any video camera from 10, 15 years ago, right? That's so we're, we are discussing what, what cameras look like moving into the future. Hmm. Part of this budget is... Um, the taxpayer will pay seventy thousand dollars of this budget. So part of the budget discussions we had <coughs> last year was working towards um, having BCM become more financially sustainable into the future. Um, franchise fees are kind of in flux. So we had some good news where we had a law pass. I think today was officially that may increase the franchise fees. That may help offset the uh, taxpayer. Um, because the franchise fees come from cable subscriptions, and those have been on the downward slope. Yeah. Uh, this law that was just passed possibly could have franchise fees for uh, things like Peacock, could require 
franchise fees. And the NBC would be required to pay franchise fees for using our infrastructure and, and our right of way. Yeah. So it's the new budget is like around one hundred ninety three thousand seventy thousand currently right now is all you're asking for from taxpayers. Yep, and the rest comes from franchise fees. And then last year the ask amount was about thirty five thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions about BCM's budget? Not at the moment. No, I know. I think you guys are safe. <laughs> at the moment. At the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chief. Bye, uh, next. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Seven. Seven. Yep. Seven. Mm -hmm. The big change is adding two full time firefighter EMTs and reallocating some of the pretty young funds to help cover that. So that's the change you see in the full time wages and reflected down through the payroll expenses, including health insurance. So you're adding two additional part-time people? Two additional yeah. full-time. Oh, full-time. I'm sorry, two additional full-time. We're at that point um, with per diems and um, on-call staff that we're getting very few. Right now I have five per diems. They're required to at least put in for a shift um, every six months, they work full, full time at other at departments, so they're giving me all the time they can give me. Uh, if I don't have a per diem available, then it means I have my full time career guy running alone, and it's unsafe. And I've decided that's not going to happen. Um, and when that happens, I have to force in another full timer. In the month of January, I've had to force, it, force in my full time as 15 times in order to get the two-man coverage. That's why we went with per diems for the last two years in a row. But it's getting harder and harder to get per, per diem. So I, I recommended four full time after negotiations with the town manager. I can go with three. I'll live with three for now. But the time's coming where we're going to have to have more full time staff. <clears throat> And it may be sooner than we all think. And did and may I, I correctly heard you what you said that they're going to be um, you say e, yeah. EMTs. They are EMTs, yes. So these these new positions. Anybody we hire now or firefighter EMT. Oh, I'm that's good. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. In fact, we just had four of my new recruits who are level one and two just finished EMT. So instead of 13 this year, I got 17. So we're moving up. That's good, because we're getting older. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm with you. Dispatch services completely wiped out. Last, last um, fiscal year, we moved that to the a general expense item, mm -hmm. because it's a shared cost that all the town benefits from. So yep. rather than putting it in it was in two departments. It was moved to that general expense. Got it. Electricity, I mean, that's quite a difference. Who knows? Uh, that's for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say every department's gone with that. Um, you last year you budgeted 13.5 for training. You utilized 14.5, but yet you went back down to. 13.5, you're increasing the number of officers in the department. Um, are you feel comfortable with that training number? 
What more? Do you need more trade? I guess. I'm sorry. Am I? Uh, yeah. yeah, I couldn't totally hear what you asked. So me. last year you budgeted thirteen thirteen thousand five hundred fifty dollars for training. And then it says actually you ended up uh, spending fourteen thousand five hundred fifty one. Uh, but you've gone back down to what you're requesting for training, but yet you've increased the number of officers. And they have mandatory training throughout the year, correct? That's correct. So are you comfortable I'm, with I'm, that training number? I'm comfortable with that. Okay. I've been able to send, um, like I said, four new recruits out to level one and level two. Yep. I paid for all that training. I paid for their time. They came back. All four of them just went out and got their EMT license. They're all licensed. <coughs> And I was able to do it within that figure. I have two company officers that will be taking some certified company training here shortly, and the plan is to be able to pay for that too. And I should have enough funding to do that. Okay. All right. Me being naive, is there any training program set up for the current firefighters that they can get to where they can perform some of the training in house? Oh, we do training in house every month. Perfect. We have our own instructors. Sometimes we call in outside instructors. I probably got uh, well, all my company officers are instructors. So we do every. In fact, they're training tonight up to the church. So awesome. I guess the only thing I had a question of is, I, I see your note about okay, if we add two more full-time firefighters needing the need for some of that OT, but don't you think if we're not using the per diem or not having to force our current firefighters to work extra OT, that the OT line should actually come down if we add more staff in? Well, we've been trying to recruit. In fact, I just put on two new recruits uh, recently, and both of them have Firefighter 1 and Firefighter 2 training. The issue is we have to train them orientation to our department, how okay. we operate things. So that takes time. Uh, the per diem, like I said, most of the time I got one coverage. The other time, the other position I get probably half the time. But you never know when that's going to happen. And my fear is that at some point my full-time career guys who are happy, as I know right now, things are going well, but when you take their weekly schedule and you start juggling around with it, there are other places to work out there, and probably some of those places pay a little bit more than Berwick, and then you're just going to start losing people. So the less we have to force them, if they have to come in and work a shift because they're being forced, they'll do that, no question. But when it's that frequent, we're going to run into issues as, as a department. Yeah, the burnout and the quality of life changes. Yep, yep. Oh, I get it. Last year we spoke about putting money into, and maybe I'm just not, maybe it's already incorporated in here and it's just not um, separated out, but we had put specific money in uh, in case the town had an emergency, we were looking for warming centers or shelters or things like that. Um, I don't see this specifically in here. Is it just incorporated into what's already here? No, that's a separate budget okay. uh, that we can talk about. It's under emergency management. Okay. I think last year you put in ten thousand dollars for the for the account. Yep. We went out and bought cots, blankets, pillows. Uh, we just had donated a trailer by the Legion that we just got yesterday. Yeah. So we'll be putting all that into that trailer. So wherever it needs to go, we can take mm -hmm. it in a short period of time and set it up. Okay. And it, did um, some of that money incorporate the training for? Hosting shelters or warming centers? It, it hasn't yet, but it will, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to skip to that. Do you feel like last night, last year we put that amount of money in? Do you feel like that's efficient for this year? Uh, I think we're ready. You think you're ready? I think you need to put another 10 in this year. Yeah. <laughs> but we're, we're ready. If you need it tonight, we'll have it. Okay. So okay. That's what we need here. Okay. At what point you had mentioned that recruiting was kind of hard with labor? Is that picking it? Is it getting better? No. 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 Uh, and w it's just not a town here. It's all, it's all over the country when it comes to volunteers and uh, trying to get volunteers on board. Yes. Back in the eighties, <laughs> we started a <laughs> we started a uh, what they call a low sap program, length of service award system something like that and the town put towards like $15,000 uh, into an account and 
all staff had to make, meet certain requirements. If they met those requirements then at the end of the year, they got credit for that year. wasn't a lot. What it did is provide a, a small retirement program so that when the individual who is now 18 turned 65, they would get a re little retirement program like 250 bucks. wasn't some, I mean it wasn't a lot, but it was, just, it was something. And it was something that back then attracted people because we we paid by the point system back then it wasn't very much funding involved because it was basically volunteer that plan also funded a death benefit so if one of them got killed it was like ten thousand dollars again not much but it was something that, that got their attention that whole program right now is only in existence because of the old staff i got on because they're still in the program the newer generation, for whatever reason, not even interested in the program. So it isn't that we haven't tried to recruit. Uh, I get people coming all the time. We, we just did three or four interviews within the last three weeks, and I think we brought on two people out of that interview who were already certified. So we're, we're looking. Uh, so what if, are you, when you say you want to bring two people to full time, Mm -hmm. Are you looking to recruit within your current part-time base, or are you going to be looking outside where you're I think, seeing? I think that it would be beneficial for the town, and this would be my thought process, is to go to the outside, see what we get for candidates. We have people right now on Borough Fire Department that may be interested in those positions. They would be included in that. Okay. But I think we have to open it up to the outside. Oh, yeah, oh, no, my, yeah. my only thought about that was, do we have, in general, do we have any interest, because you just said how hard it was to recruit, um, we add two more full-time positions to the budget, are we going to be able to, do you think we're going to be able to fill them like, oh, within the next couple yes. of months? I know it's difficult, I know, I know police departments had a hard time, uh, but yes. Okay. I mean, right. like I said, I've got qualified people right now on the call for us that are actually helping me out by working per diem shifts that more than likely would be interested. Okay, so it's not it's not likely then that if we approve these in the budget July 1, they're going to go vacant for six months. They're not going to go vacant. That's, that's, kind of what, I was that's, that's what I was asking. Is just, do we anticipate we'll be able to fill? Yeah, we, we can't afford to let them go vacant. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I don't have any. Good. No. Thank you. Thanks, you. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Did you want to do anything with my management? <coughs> Ten thousand sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. Uh, rack. Uh, recreation. Make sure it's quiet. Those are the ones we just got right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we just had a couple updates coming. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of what changed. That's what I'm looking for. This is the last page telling us. Yeah, no, she just gave us like three new sheets, right? This one tells, I don't know what it tells you. I think there was some updates on what they took in versus what the minus sign is. I don't think the taxpayer will have changed. See if any of your final. All right. I think what the was. Good evening. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? We're keen on it. Okay. So I think the bottom line is the same, which is why I'm throwing off. All right. Cruise on through this. So a big change we got. Hey, Josh. Mike. Hi, guys. Hi. I can go over some of the highlights and kind of jump in whenever, <laughs> whenever you'd like. So wages, that's just a uh, increase with long, long, uh, actually it's the, the, the changes, it's the 5% increase and I also believe, um, yeah, it's just, it's interesting, about 6.7%. Anyway, there's no, no changes in personnel for full-time wages. Um, <coughs> Part-time wages is proposed to increase a little bit. You can see that reflected through the personnel costs. Uh, and that's for the summer staffing thing? Yeah, that's yeah. for summer camp. camp staff. 
we've combined and streamlined some of the cost codes. Uh, we increased grounds maintenance. So grounds maintenance now includes um, some park maintenance for our future parks. Grounds maintenance is also offset by uh, field user fees. Mm -hmm. So we don't use public works for grounds? We Not currently. It's either myself or we subcontract it out. Yeah, do we use like a service or something yeah. to come in and make sure the baseball field look great and all that stuff? And grass? Yeah, I took over a lot of it this last summer, so we cut that down quite a bit. About half, I'd say. So you don't have a part timer who does like mowing the fields and the park? That's correct, I do not. <laughs> So you do it? I do. Youth sports dropped by 100%. What is that for? We don't sponsor any or organize any youth sports. They're all their own uh, or citizen commissions, yeah. Berwick soccer is supposed to be meeting today somewhere. In the right about the same way, yeah. <laughs> so the baseball, football, all <coughs> those are done through the school or through their own. We just maintain the fields. Yeah. They're all done through pri private parent booster That's programs. what the words I was looking for is that, yeah. Okay. We're looking at summer camp figures over the past several years, and COVID really threw a wrench into <clears throat> just the cost. Yeah, I think yeah. we look back uh, before COVID, summer camp was around 46, 50,000, so it's kind of getting back to. We just, we just put it at a number that it's already there. It's already at. We just got it so it's not in red anymore. And the operating supplies? Operating supplies. And materials and supplies, I believe, merged. I was just running through that over my head again. I believe we merged those two just to cut out on a line item. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. But the other one went down as well. There must have been something in there that belonged in outside services. Yeah, there was yeah, like the Myrex. Yeah, it just seems odd that yeah. materials would be that. I think it was my rec. It was my rec. Yeah, it was the, or the outside services. Okay. The registration software. What is enrichment as a line item? <laughs> that was my question. Enrichment is anything like Girls on the Run, anything we sponsor some Boy Scouts for. Um, uh, Girls on the Run is really the only one I can think of that we're currently active with. So it's a sponsored pro. It's an actually yep. sponsored program. Yep. Okay. Like it's we don't collect the registration fees. Um, girls on the run of Maine do, but we really supply them with all their operating supplies. So you plan on using it for the uh, sensory board? Yeah, but that was going to come out of this one. And. Summer camp has gone up like six percent. Is that because we're not equating with the user fees for when people go to camp? No, no. It's because of we inflation, yeah. it's everything going up. We did what we considered was a very bare minimum summer camp, and we still have probably five or six thousand dollars to add to this number because we have to buy shirts before the fiscal year changes for the next camp. So this is, this is the number. Yeah, as, I, think I mean, it, as close as we could absolutely project it. It was under budgeted. That's what I was trying to venture through COVID. It, the, the, the actual number for camp was around $50,000 mm -hmm. before COVID. You know, one, two years and one year before COVID. And COVID happened, and then we actually started budgeting for summer camp in the operating budget, and it started at 30000 and part of it was we had a reduced um, 
attendance in summer camp. So as the we were turned back to normal, it should have it should be it really is at where it should have been. Fifty, rather And the numbers have gone back up for summer camp. Yes, we filled up. We filled out last year. It filled, okay. We projected. Um, we didn't want to take more than 150, and we took 151. That's awesome. What is your projection um, for this year? Do you know? We're gonna put a 20. We're gonna shoot 150, and then put a 25 person wait list. And if we get our staff the way we want to, we'll take 175. And we'll still be well within our 10 to 1 ratio. Yeah. And at 175, you're still going to be able to maintain it with this budget? 25 other additional kids? We may have, yeah, I believe we can. It'll take some uh, logistics with the buses. That's where the, the entry fees and buses is where the majority of our costs come from. So if we have to add a fourth bus, we may just leave some kids at the field one day and just... <laughs> It happens all the time. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> they're under super. They're under supervision. <laughs> all right. Here, here's, my, here's my one summer camp follow up. You, See you, you later, guys kids. do an awesome job with summer camp and, and keeping the kids involved in everything you do. Have you looked at what the costs are in the surrounding towns and everything, and think that you're too light in what the enrollment fee is? We are. We are low. And I, and I think that's why we're seeing it here. And, and again, I don't. I don't mind the increase because obviously I think there's a need for the children in Berwick to be a part of it, but I don't think people are going to have that much if you move that line up a little bit more to kind of bring that in because, again, you offer far more because right. of the work you guys do than a lot of the camps around town, and it's a much better value. Yeah. With us, um, with last year being our first year doing it, we weren't aware that we had to get approval to either decrease or increase our fees. So, okay. oops, we yeah. lowered them last year. We yeah. didn't know we had to get that approval. We were going to up them this year. And then we found out we had to stay with what was voted in December of 2021, which is right around where we were going to go anyway. So we, instead of bothering you guys to up the fee, you'll see us before next year. Okay. Looking to increase to yes, sir, for next year's budget. Yes. Okay. So it's in, in, it is increased. It's back up to what was approved by you all. At the last time it was presented to you all, and we shame on us. It's kind of before our fault for not knowing that that was board. the process. I think so too, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, that's, and again, and, and that's all. I, and that's all I'm saying. With with the cost of inflation, you know, you guys are working, I think, far harder than you need to be. And if you get and a 25 person wait list, it's not like the demand is there. Mm -hmm. You know, is it only for residents? Nope. There's a non-resident fee that's higher than the resident fee. Mm -hmm. It's not, um. it's not an extremely <laughs> discouraging increase. <laughs> and we, we didn't advertise it, but we did open it up for the first week of registrations was just Berwick residents. And then it went to non-residents after that. We're we just, over ha just over half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How fast did you sell out last year? We opened up late last year, so we sold out pretty quick. We're open way early compared to last year. So we're, we, it's a hard comparison. We're trickling right gotcha. now. Right now we're sitting at 48 K through 6 and 11, 7 and 8. Hmm. And we're hoping for 115 for K through 6 and 35 for yeah. 7 and 8. Yeah. I, I, I have no doubt you'll get, get it. You'll, I have yeah. no doubt you'll get it. I just don't think it's in anybody's mind right now. And that's, yeah. that's a lot. I would and agree. We're offering a lot more payment plans this year. So if, if, if they wanted to go on a payment plan when we first opened, they had 17 weeks that they could pay. Um, so now we're down to 15 weeks, so it's, and people are using it. It's a great idea. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's advertised as give us a call on the information page, on the rec page. Yes. If you need for other arrangements, let us know now. Okay. Um, I know it's a budget meeting, but can we get any update on the, the playground, where it was in the beginning? I know, the can of worms, but... Um, is it gonna, everything's going to be ready for camp, right? Playground's done. Play, playground's yeah, up and running. Yep. It's, um, right. Since we're all live now, I was uh, going to plan, we were going to plan a, uh, once we get the courts paved, uh, open like a, just a grand opening ceremony so we didn't piecemeal the playground, the basketball court, the tennis court. Right. wanted it all done. So um, that that's, first, that's the first thing we're doing once the asphalt's, which the, trending, the weather's trending, we might have it next week. No. <laughs> 
Um, but so yeah, once soon, all that is done, there's going to be some sort of a, to the townspeople, some sort of a... Yep. You all are going to be invited to cut the ribbon, and we'll do that ceremony. We're hoping to do it all together. We also have a naming of the field, and we just got an gotcha. Eagle Scout who yep. just did the new flagpole. So we're hoping to do all of that Ceremonial together. flag raising and the naming of a field all, all on the same day. All on the same day mm -hmm. and everything, and that will happen prior to camp. Mm -hmm. Way prior, yes. Okay. We're hoping but, to do it prior to the start of baseball. Which is April 1st. Really? Well, You're they, start, they practicing start practicing April 1st. They start the end of April. Excuse me, their season starts April 1st. And you're going to pay it before April 1st? No. No. Can't imagine. No. Okay. I have a general thought, not for this year. But <laughs> at what point, with all the boosters and everything that Josh is doing work to save money and where, you know, we've talked about, we've outsourced plowing the water department. Do we just add another public works employee and take care of the grounds of the lots and the fields that the town owns? Well, because we, it might be cheaper at that point, and it, yeah. I think it will save on the liability. Because if we have if we have the boosters paying for their own, I don't know who's checking the insurance if somebody gets hurt doing that. Um, you know, Josh is volunteering his time to be out there doing it. I'm sure you've done it, picking up garbage. Um, Again, we talked about different plowing that we've subbed out at some right. point. I mean, I think to pull that back to the town, I know right now it was a tapped department, but we might be able to save money on some of these other department budget you lines and reduce some of the fees yeah. and, and just looking at it. Yeah. So, again, not for this year. I think it's going to be a lot more looking into it, but I think at some point we've got to start planning that. I think in the long term we're going to save the town money, and we'll be doing it in town, which I think will streamline a lot of the things that we want to get done. So right. prior to covid Public Works was doing all of our mowing. They were. And there's no. absolutely so what, what happened mowing, during COVID that they we, don't mow. I was not here when it changed, so I cannot say. I, I don't only, have an answer for that either. Hearsay, None, what of we know here, I'm not sure. None of us are up here. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't up here, I don't think. I was up here. I did, I did, all I remember is, uh, <laughs> you know, I think there was an intentional decision to, uh, we bought a mower. I think part of the intention behind buying a mower was to have the director mow in the off time. So that was a previous director that put that in motion. I, and I don't know, I don't know the exact of why. We had a part-time mower. Yep, we did. The part-time mower cost us. No, it wasn't who we contracted out. She had a single person that was coming in and mowing. Who chewed up the baseball debt that we ended up having to buy? Nope. Not ours. That was public works. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we yeah, found our answer. <laughs> <laughs> but when I you mean, just said you bought a mower so that the director can mow in the uh, off time, the problem with that is the grass needs to be mowed during the on time, in the middle of the summer when we got camp and everything else going on. Yeah. I, I agree. I think we ought to look at maybe because in the off time, in the winter time, public works could use an additional part-time employee. So if that person is redesignated during, I don't know, April 1st, uh, whenever the leagues are still going, There's then maybe you're time. not paying so many contractor fees in different departments because you only have one person in the liability lands with the town and not the fees. I, again, I agree. It's not a thought for No, it's year. not a thought for tonight, but it's something just to throw that we're out thinking there. about. I know last year Public Works did have a part time mower. And yeah. I believe that turned into a full time position. That sounds to be an ask for Under mm -hmm. accident, we had mentioned accident with mowing and so but It used to be 2500 Now there's nothing. Nothing was used in 20, 2023, but they're talking about COVID, so. I wonder if Which do one? we have insurance? Or? insurance. There's some supplemental insurance, but we're covered through May Municipal. For mowing? Well, I'd be that. No, ac that's health. Accident, that's sickness. Accident, yeah. sickness. Oh. Oh, I see what you're saying. I wonder if that was something that had to do with camps or anything else with as a supplemental. It just seemed to disappear. Maybe it's just something to look at. It disappeared last year, too. Yeah, that's what I mean. That. They're, and they're mentioning COVID, so it's like a pre-COVID. It got lost somewhere.
When you say building maintenance at ten thousand, you only used fifty seven hundred. And you're looking for seven thousand this year. Is that the 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 buildings on on the field? Correct. That's what you're talking about. Okay. All right. It needs a lot of work. I that's my belief as well. <laughs> so I'm just kind of wondering why you were at ten and you went to seven. If you it needs a lot can, of work. You can put as many zeros behind that number as you want. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any plans around that building? Because I know some of that building is rotted. No, the building's fine. It's uh, it's, not, it's not unsafe. It's just not insulated, and it's um, I don't know. Maybe the second floor, the second floor is not really. Close to. Second floor doesn't need to have a whole lot of weight on it. We're using it for our lightweight summer camp storage. All the sports are out. Um, okay. It's in fully functional operating condition but should we, would we like something that's climate controlled and insulated absolutely and with bathrooms I think my biggest wish list for the public would be to have serviceable bathrooms have we looked at what the cost would be to upgrade that when we put in the splash pad and redo the pump out there. We say the first part of that again. I said, I, have you looked at what the cost would be to upgrade that building, or at least put a bathroom? It's a six-figure job. Or put a bathroom out there when if they're going to go out there and run new irrigation and new splash pad and all. I mean, that the timing—if it all works out, the timing couldn't be better. We talk about you know dig a hole once with everything else in in town. I mean, mm -hmm. why dig it up once and then all of a sudden? I think three the, years down the line, approve it and then dig a hole again and mess all the piping up. Yep. <clears throat> Plumbing's there. The guts are there. Drainage was, I, I, don't, I don't know how much more the drainage that was installed for the playground can take. We had some, the big storm we had, the big rainstorm we had at the beginning of winter. It wasn't full by any means, but it was using every, I'd say half of its capacity. And it seemed to hold up well though. It held up, right? yeah. yeah I'm really awesome happy with the, the way it turned out. Again, just things to think about. I know not a this year thing, but as we start moving that needle, you know, it's going to save us, again, as we talk about budget, it's going to save us money in the long run if we just find ways to do it once. What do we pay for a fire extinguisher check? When do we? No, we, we pay for that? And annually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fire department doesn't do it. Fire. Oh, they don't do it. No. <laughs> That's one of those outdated things. So you bring your fire extinguisher to a fire station, they check it for you, whatever. They don't, they don't do that stuff anymore. Oh. It's, it's, no, I, I had a fire extinguisher I, I, in a building I was renting, or, and I wanted to get it checked, and I, they're just like, yeah, you have to go to like an actual company and yeah. pay them to do it. Really? Yeah. Like, fire. Like, yeah. like the closest place that would do it was like in Scarborough. I was like, I'm not going to drive to Scarborough just to get this one fire extinguisher checked. That's just insane. Yeah. And then pay them for the privilege. <laughs> <laughs> Probably have been cheaper just to buy a new one. That's what I was thinking. I don't have anything else, I don't no, have anything else either. Jeremy? No, you? no, I think you're good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all. Good night. Don't be worried. Everyone's kids are fine and safe. Unattended. <laughs> 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 Good night. Good night, guys. Good night. We're on a miscellaneous. Good. Here we start. Fifteen. <laughs> Oh, look, here's the <laughs> I was wondering why people were so sick. Miscellaneous. Yes. You're under the mist. Category. You didn't think they just wanted to watch us talk on that? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I saw I saw a mist there, and then I was like, well, wait a minute. If Vision Burroughs not on this list, why is it that he's still here? Maybe we're going to catch him in the end. Okay. <laughs> Mm 
Yeah. I feel like last year we did this at the podium, but it was also like 11 o'clock at night. I feel like every time we got here, so. The uh, overall request for Envision Borough is 21365 So part of that includes $7,120 to support the Borough for a Lifetime subcommittee. Um, and the Borough for a Lifetime is absolutely on fire right now. Um, we have yeah, good one. Lori yes. Jackson yeah. from Borough for a Lifetime. Um, uh, it's really in incredible to see um, that we're tapping into all that the Age Friendly Network has to offer. Uh, it's something that Envision Borough incubated in 2016, and um, they're really stepping in beyond my wildest dreams of what what they can accomplish. Um, other part of that budget, 9000 for uh, lawn chairs, Sullivan Square. Jeremy does an incredible job, and the committee does an incredible job fundraising. That just helps to keep the event sustainable and kind of a less of a, you know, you know it dep all completely dependent on sponsorships to make sure the <coughs> event continues into the future. And then support for subcommittees and projects. That fund is to help, you know, groups like Borough for Lifetime, if the Sustainability Committee um, projects, they can start up pretty ad hoc, and it just helps to incubate these projects and helps good ideas. The come last to year, that, that money was put towards the relaunch of the the Burbank Historical Society. We hope the relaunch and. Um, this year, uh, we will be funding a, por a portion of those funds will help cover uh, the Berwick Community Gardens becoming a 501c3. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. And part of what Envision Berwick does that makes it so successful is recruitment and bringing new people into the fold helps us keep going, uh, helps bring a whole, I mean, just fresh perspective of the group and changes the dynamic in a really awesome way. Um, so trying to reach out in a more coordinated way and have, you know, brochures and targeted ways of reaching people. Uh, we're, we've been a member of the Great Falls Chamber. It's the Greater Summersworth Chamber of Commerce. They rebranded the Great Falls a few years ago. Uh, they cover Berwick, South Berwick, North Berwick, Rollinsford, and Summersworth. We've been a member there for a while. And one of the budget requests of bulk mailing to help uh, reach people through mail. They'll be available. For all town departments. I have a question. Yeah. Um, we didn't we discuss as a board the possibility of funding the community garden and then wanted to be a nonprofit and then we decided against doing that? Yeah. Okay. I'm a little confused by that yeah. too. Yeah. I, I, and I believe the, the issue was a couple of different things. One was that we were worried that we were setting a precedent of, yeah. of yes. us funding uh, uh, you know, anybody who wants a nonprofit in the town. Right. Um, but also the the confusion of the of the liability between what is a town organization and what's not a town organization. Yeah, right. That we aren't adopting, it's a Berwick community garden, not the Berwick town garden. We don't own it, we don't have. Right, and that's, to answer your question, that is exactly why my understanding was that for the board, it was didn't make sense for the town coming from, from you folks to fund the, the community garden becoming a 501c3. But much like the uh, uh, um, far, farmer's market, which Envision Berwick incubated, and eventually became a 501c3, we are trying to bring projects forward that then can become buoyant so that we're not spending, you know, lawn chairs may be the exception, but things like the, the historical society, the farmer's market, you want to see those projects take on a life of their own, and so to, to give the community garden that opportunity 
it seemed like a good moment as it you know has has now gotten to the point where it's getting ready to launch to fund continuing that paper books, which, which I think at this point is in process, but has been funded, you know, out of somebody's personal account, which makes me uncomfortable. So it leaves me with two questions. I yeah. thought when it was presented to us that they had received... 50000 $25,000. $25,000 $25, grant to do yeah. exactly that. Not, mm -hmm. d that did not, co no, the grant covers launching the garden itself. And not it does not... Does not cover the 501c3, okay, so and it doesn't preclude them be from becoming a 501c3. It okay. just gives them the opportunity to, to become a, a viable community garden. Okay, so thank you. That clarifies that. So then my second thing is, when you bring this up, you're talking about you're going to use funds from Bro Envision Berwick, which is at dollars, to assist them to get their 501c, but this isn't going to be an annual thing. This is going to be to launch them. Yes. Okay. They already uh, have folks who are ready to, to step into board positions yep. and, and are basically have their paperwork essentially lined up to, to make this move so that, again, it becomes something that takes on a life of its own and is buoyant and, and Envision Berwick can continue to incubate and bring forth projects like like that 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 makes much more sense because i know when we were talking about it we were talking about the difference between a six and an eight foot fence that was like 15 and 18 thousand but your budget for that is only two thousand so it kind of puts it more in the perspective of you're just trying to help it launch as a 501c <laughs> once you do that then it, it's off on its own and you're just going to assist any other good project that comes along in the same mm -hmm. manner yes yeah okay okay in the same way that we shepherded, yeah, the, the others. The, nope, exactly. I, that makes sense to me now. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, okay. All right, now just to follow up to that, do you have a checks and balance in place on the Envision Barrett board for groups that come to you saying we want to be a nonprofit? Well, yes, okay. because <laughs> the checks and balances are the comp plan and the surveys that are our foundational document. So okay. anything we do we have to look back to those documents and say, does this fit within what the citizens have asked for in, in, throughout the surveys and what the, the, the previous comprehensive plan and the, the, the rewrite that is you know, available for any of us to read and look at now um, moving forward. So as, if somebody came to us and said, I want to start a 501c3 and I want Envision Berwick to take it on and it involves something that's completely outside of the world of anything that, that the comp plan of the surveys would have asked for, we would naturally have to say that doesn't, that's that's not part of this. No, and, and that's, and look, Jeremy, I know you would do a good job vetting it and putting it out no, there. But uh, so the reason question. why I asked that yeah. is because you know one day somebody is going to come and ask 100%. you, you're going to have to say no. And yes. I just want to make sure you guys are protected or totally. whomever is on the board yes. at the right. time is protected. Because yeah. eventually <laughs> it will go from you, the liability will go from you to the town because that's how it works. <laughs> And, um, and that's why you guys didn't want to get out in front of it and say, oh, of course, the town's going to fund somebody starting a 501c3 because then yeah. every single person who wants to, you know, exactly. operate with and, and, of course, the yeah. first time you say no to somebody, it's because you didn't like it for whatever right, reason. Right, right. Yeah. You know, it's not because yeah. of the – so that's that's why I just have that checks and balances. And of that's course. All. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Any more questions on the Envision Burrick? You jumped right into Envision Berwick, too. You were ready to go. Thank um, you. So you, the lawn chairs for Solon Square is n at 9000 How much, and I was trying to look at the other sheet here, how much is the overall, is it overall cost to do that? I know you get money back. And Last year, uh, in lawn chairs cost 32000 approximately, at 32300 I think. <laughs> so 28000 of that I raised from sponsorship. So in terms of, of, you know, return on investment, for us, it's about our time because we pour ourselves into it. So we think of the event as a huge return on our investment for sort of its success, how much joy it brings, how much it checks those comp plan sort of um, marching orders. Um, but for, for the town, we think that the return on investment is huge because we raise so much of that money that, you know, obviously – for the amount that goes into Envision from the town, 
we're trying to, to you know bring value by through sponsorship. And the vendors also pay, correct? Um, I think it was forty bucks or something like that for the for the uh, makers market. It's not a it's it's not super steep. No, um, it's, right. I wasn't expecting you know, it to be like a thousand dollars. We're not printing money because you want them to be you know, making their money. It's like yeah. the merch sales. Yes. It's really it it covers yeah. what it is basically. Yeah, and you're bringing forward some money from last year, right? Twenty nine thousand. Yes. Dollars from last year? No, I think it's eighteen from last year, and we're out still um, about six hundred for Bad Wolf. Eighteen one eighty two. Yeah. Yeah. For. Um, oh, have the wrong thing. Vision Burrow right here. For the. Store it was twenty four that was carried forward in this fiscal year. <laughs> I don't have latest. <laughs> Just to spend some money. Um, sometimes I wonder about um, Berwick for a lifetime. Why aren't they with the library? Sometimes I feel like they're sort of the library. Why don't they separate out like the garden? Or well, we would not look. Berwick for a lifetime is important. They're doing a great job. Yeah. They have a lot of engagement. One of the sheets that 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 they brought runs down some of their numbers. If you're yeah. interested in hearing any of them, there it's pretty pretty. Significant. Um, they're, they're, they're saying that the uh, attendance for all events um, equals 1,196 instances of participation last year. Um, the Lunch and Learns are doubling. They've, they've done really well. Special programming has been, been really high. Was Meet and Bleat last year? That might have been the year before, I feel like. But regardless, they, there's, uh, you know, plus food great. boxes, sand bucket brigade. Like, they're doing a ton. Would we say, no, you have to stay with Envision Berwick? It's come up time and again. We would encourage them to be able to become buoyant in the same way. At the moment, that hasn't happened. I think um, the handoff from Sharon, who was chairing, to, to Roz and Stina is fairly recent. So I think once they have their feet under them, it's something we can, we can look at again. As long as they are a functioning entity, that is moving forward, that's what's important to us. Um, you know, I don't know, I think that Sharon, though she hosts many of their events at the library, she has so much going on. Mm -hmm. Putting them under yeah. the library's purview, I think is asking more than yeah. she's able to take on, which is why the handoff happened. Yeah. No, that's, that's very right. fair. And again, it's, 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 a, it's a phenomenal program. program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. but. Yeah, it's a huge, huge asset to the town. Yeah. So Great Falls Chamber of Commerce, you, um, you get a lot from from that, huh? You know, um, it's a good question, and it's a fair question. It's one that came up at the last meeting. We had a Bonnie from the chamber come and speak at the last Division Berwick meeting, um, and uh, now is as good a time as any to encourage all of you to come to all the meetings. We would love to have connections between, I think in the past, the select board did, there was always a member on Envision, something that we miss and we would love to see more of, but you know, everybody only has so much time, so people keep Doesn't telling well, me. Well, we switched our nights to, we, we, we ended up, we end up being time. lined up the same time as you guys were. Yeah, well, you know, that's not my problem. I promise you, that's <laughs> not why I'm missing meetings. Missing meetings, come to Envision You're on second Tuesdays now, so. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I uh, I know the question. For, I'm sorry. Um, the second Tuesday. Yeah, but the question no, we're, we're around. The third. third. We're the third. third. Uh, is since you're, Jeremy, since you're here, um, you're the second. The question has come around a couple of times about: Are we going to be recording in Vision Berwick meetings so that the public can see what's going on with some of these things? So let me change hats and put on my BCM <laughs> thing here <laughs> and say to you: I think that's a great idea. Okay. I would like to see all the meetings captured, yes. and it is yeah, my have. ambition for, um, look, BCM's function, to me, is very much aligned with Envision Burbeck's function, is very much aligned with the DCBS subcommittee yeah. function, which is to shine a light on what is happening here, Absolutely. to remove people's confusion or doubt and to educate them as to how 
civic engagement works because in doing that, we um, hopefully get more civic engagement, right? And remove that um, kind of, um, I don't know, like nervous worry that something untoward is happening because we're all just working as hard as we can to do good work, right? Um, and so <laughs> for all the, for, for everything that happens, I would love to be able to create more opportunities to shine that light through BCM. But, you know, there's also, like, there's somebody who has to be here to capture those meetings. Somebody has to then edit them the next day. So as I get deeper into BCM and I'm able to handle more, it's something that I would like to see more of all around. And um, so the short answer is yes, and the long answer is yes. But it's where we're going. It's not going to be and, and next the, week. The meeting. Well, to be fair, also, um, unlike a select board meeting or a planning board meeting, your meeting doesn't have to be broadcast live. Right. It could be recorded and, yeah, right. and broadcast later. So, you know, you're not... You're not hamstrung by the idea that you have to broadcast that moment and have connection with the internet or the, or you know, to the right. uh, to the to the to the, to the to network channel. You started that Twitch. <laughs> you can just you can actually straight up record yes. and then bring it in and the we next do. day. We do. It goes over Zoom and it can be requested and right. we can broadcast it as a member, uh, 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 as a parent with kids in the school system. Yep. It's really hard to watch poorly captured meetings. And that's not just because I want to hear and see, like, you know, a filmmaker. That's because it's hard to watch. And so I would rather I would rather look to raising that bar than just say, well, it's good enough. We shoved a open laptop in the corner, and now it's captured. Are you that's saying fine. the school board meetings aren't high quality? I mean, I, I, they are, they're really, yeah. they're trying. I think they, They've they gotten moved. better. They have gotten they better. Meeting they rooms, gotten and better. They're, they're working on it. I think they're, they're aware because people, people complained about it. No, they, they, yeah. they, are, they are getting much better, but yes, yeah. I, right. it is a vast difference between watching a school board meeting and watching a planning board meeting or a select board meeting. Everybody. Yes, yeah. you, you're absolutely correct. But you bring up an uh, important <laughs> word, the school system. Um, <laughs> Is, there may be opportunities there as you explore BCM further and, and its growth as that there could be select internships, there could be yeah. um, things for credit, there could be, you know, an adult ed thing on how to film certain things or to edit or things of that nature. There's always kids up there that are looking for fun uh, community service as opposed to just, because, I mean, we've tried to get them to more than mm -hmm. one and they're like, yeah, no. Um, but to say, hey, do you want to be, you know, a cameraman or a director of something for this term or something of that nature? That may be something to explore with um, the school board or just the school administration because there may be some talented students up there mm -hmm. in the high school that could potentially assist. Absolutely. Um, in that venture. So, again thought for down the road, not necessarily for the budget, but... Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's um, I'm, I, I, uh, I go in and speak, I, I went in last semester and spoke to the class, <laughs> and now they've asked me to come back with some regularity, so awesome. those are in That's awesome. That's, awesome. That's great. About. That's great. Any other questions on Envision Berwick? Okay. You asked about the falls. To, uh, oh. Didn't get to finish answering your Sorry. question. Oh. It's to be honest with you, I think it is not a huge value at the moment. But here's what I see: the falls covers Rollinsford, Summersworth, and the Berwicks, and I believe that to succeed economically and just as a community. We, we can't be too insular. We, we have to think outside of the silo of just Berwick. And I think that the work of, of the Falls has been for several years now to think in, in that way. And I think that that is smart. And I think that, that that's why we asked Bonnie to come speak and connect with us. And so at the moment, that money that, that, that is going to the Falls, like. We should be going to the events. We should put everybody's stretched thin and, and connecting 
with the folks. And I know some of the members of Envision Berwick have gone to some of the events, right? In the future, I believe it is really important. Have we taken full as much advantage of it as we should up to this point? Probably not, but we're trying. We really are, and that's why Bonnie was at the last meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Other miscellaneous? At, uh, digital communication, branding, and signage. So Envision Berwick logo redesign. Um, the Envision Berwick logo, I think I photoshopped. It used it was envisioning downtown Berwick, and we just shortened it to Envision Berwick, and I think I photoshopped the logo eight years ago. Um, part of the logo redesign is to bring it into the branding system and to be able to utilize that for the brochure that Envision Berwick will be making. Um, going along with um, bringing in town departments and brands into the branding system last year, Burke for a Lifetime had their logo redone. When was this? <coughs> Last year. Last year. Burke for Life, yep. Which was used for their print materials and banners and things they use for their they have a brochure. informational tables. Yeah. Yep. Um, I know I have heard that um, the Public Works guys, they weren't overly impressed with the logo. Is there a way, if we do redo the logo, to like if there's any birds or whatever, can we take that part out and just have it say, you know, bird for them? Or? We can certainly look at um, adjustments within the logo, but just like any other like place, G-Files. like if you look at, at, at um, the chairman's hat, that is <laughs> what the Berwick logo is. Now, there's a whole yeah. system of the town seal and the logo different logos in different situations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but when you work for a, a, a company, like you go get a job someplace, unfortunately, we aren't all given the opportunity to come in and then say, I'm not in love with, you know, the, whatever, the uniform, the, the colors, the, it, it's... Um, it's just a question. No, 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 I'm, and, and it's a <laughs> legit question, but it's an important question to answer because as, as the select board has moved the, the branding forward, and it comes under a, a plan that now has a brand guide and, and mm-hmm. specific colors, um, we want, as a town, to kind of move that forward in a, in a, in a functional way. And when you get into those situations where people say, I liked when I just went across the street and told Devin Boot Dukes, make me a shirt with a truck on it and write text on it. Like, that was the way things were done for a long time. But every sign of different, every place here looked different. And so we're, we're trying to end that um, in a I functional mean, even, way. Even in this room, we have this seal, we have that seal. There's a, there's a seal mm-hmm. on the front, I think. Is, mm-hmm. It's different. Yeah, there's one over there on the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I was this one's different than yeah there's one like on the front of this uh, front of this table. I mean, like, and that was different than the sign that was out front here. That was different than the sign that was on the front of the field. That was different mm-hmm. than the sign that you passed when you came into town. So I, I, I understand everything, what you mean. It, it, it was very disjointed. Yep. It was like 30 years of different signage. Like every 10 years, you're just like, we're going to do a new one. And they, that's what they, they did it. But they, they didn't they take did the old ones down. <laughs> you know? so, Lisa, I, I want everybody to be happy and to feel good about <laughs> the brand. I also think that as time goes on and people become, you know, just like they redid the signs in Dover, right? I'm sure there were people when they redid the signs in Dover who said, I miss the old signs in Dover. But after a while, you go to Dover and you go, oh, those signs look nice. You get used to it and it becomes Dover. Same I don't thing. have a problem with the signs. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> just asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the public works. That's all I was yeah. asking. I do have one more thing, Jerry. So many times you see Envision Berwick, and they're welcoming this one and welcoming that one and so forth. And um, I never saw that Domino's was welcomed. Did we? I don't know. Um, I, don't I never know. noticed that they were. Were they? From Envision Berwick? Yeah, I mean, because they were new and... and No, but I don't think Envision Berwick has thus far put forth any kind of a welcoming... Like, we don't... One of the things we've talked about is like a welcome basket 
for people who move to town. We don't do that for businesses either. We, we um, you know, through the DCBS, are you talking about Envision Berwick or the DCBS? I'm talking about Envision Berwick, yeah. Am I allowed to talk from my chair? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like, yeah, none, no, yeah, none of this like, is. Oh, I was just so, going to yeah. answer because I do the, I volunteer. Were they? Maybe I missed I, it? No, no, no. I think you're talking, are you talking about the social media? Yes. I have not gotten to every business. Um, I just, I think, I used to do the local business spotlights, but they take a long time. And I haven't done one. I think Bad Wolf was the last one maybe a year ago. But they take a lot of time to do. I... When I started the local business spotlights, they were small local business spotlights. And so I think those are the businesses I still highlight because most people know Domino's. Um, if I ever get back into the local business spotlights, I will try to be inclusive. But I never, you know, I just did like the smaller ones that people might not know about. I don't know if that answers Yeah, I guess I mentioned it because, you know, they were new. They were, you know, it took a while to get here and it was a Maybe not everyone was interested in having them here, and they do pay taxes. Yes, you know? I know. And we, we have to for tax Mois. money here, so we have to businesses. include everyone. I haven't gotten to Moi. I haven't gotten to Primal Fit. I haven't gotten to Tra uh, Aroma Joe's. I haven't gotten to the dairy. Um, so it's, it's just, just hard. It's to just keep on your up. list, and you it's, volunteer. That's, that's it's so. hard to keep up with everything, but also I do tend to promote more of the small businesses. I think if. A lot of people were asking, like, can you introduce Domino's or can you introduce? Um, uh, Everybody knows who they are. That, that I, I, I just didn't cross my mind to do like, this is Domino's and this is the staff here and this is the what you can buy. It's, I, really, it's just something I, I noticed. Okay, it's really not yeah. A big deal. yeah. <laughs> Maybe you had done it. I wasn't sure. That's what I was asking. No, and I definitely am always. If anyone has anything they want highlighted on social media, like I definitely, you can send it. Email. And thank you for everything. Yes. And I are. will <laughs> try to get to it. I've definitely been a little slower on the social media. No, you haven't. You do a great job. Thank, thank you yes. very much. But Jeremy, following up with that, um, we are promoting economic development. We are promoting um, a more robust downtown Berwick. And you said you guys had considered a basket or something like that. Um, and then because you were talking also about the Chamber of Commerce. Is there something that Inversion you would, or could do as these new businesses move into the downtown? Like, a, I don't know, they used to do a... Pay more business ribbon. after hours in town, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. ribbon cutting, something like that that maybe is less, you know, less expensive, I don't know. But just something to say that, hey, you're here, welcome to Berwick. I'm Absolutely. glad that you're, you're doing that. Again, just purely a suggestion, but... Well, just, one thing that's happened recently is that our friend... Uh, Jeff at Orange Circle Farm has put together a Berwick business directory oh, through nice. Inversion Berwick. So pulling them in, adding them to the business directory, then it will be a page that lives on the website. But yeah, points well taken. It'd be great to also welcome them with a, some Berwick swag or here's a mug or whatever. Yeah. I also think it'd be great to be able to do that for people who are moving here from away or from another town, or just to, in a really simple way, here's your candle yeah. and your Berwick business directory yeah. and your magnet. If I never got to yeah. That, yeah. yeah. I, I just think as we're, we're seeking to promote, you know, a more robust downtown, as people spoke earlier about, you know, we came from Ohio when we had, did these events and things like that, and let these towns know that, you know, they're welcome here. Yes. You know, and, and we're happy that you're here. We're happy that you're going to put roots of your business here in town and... Just so you know, you there's avenues. The right, there, yeah. Envision Berwick is here. There's avenues if you want to participate. That, you know, as new business starts coming, because I think the next couple of years are going to be huge yeah. for yeah. development. Yeah. Absolutely. So. The comprehensive plan template, that's, that's really all about taking a lot of the words and paragraphs, condense them down to easy to access visuals and come up with a design template for the whole document. Ongoing stationary needs, that includes things like business cards or random things that um, we support. The signage, New Chironic kayak launch sign, so that's the kayak launch of Rochester Street. That's a, that's a huge plus. Yes. Yeah, I agree. The Berwick bi-monthly, that's the continuation of the bi-monthly. 
Um, we're up to 708 subscriptions, which is, that's 708 organically grown. Those are people that are opening and reading it. It's got an open rate of 65%, which is, to me, that's unheard of for email list. Um, people are also visiting our website. Um, 169 people visit the page on the town website. It's constantly in the top 25 of our uh, pages on the town website. Um, they're dropped off at the library, post office, mainly local yokes, and at town hall. Let me do the next one. All right. No, let me do it. You want to do it? No, you go ahead. You can carry up for it. So, hold on to your hats. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's any secret that our website is not fantastic. I was going to circle back to that before you went on and say yes. <laughs> um, and I think in keeping with their theme of communication and, and shining a light and information sharing, um, we have put a lot of time into thinking about what that looks like in, in the world of Facebook, in the world of social media, in a world where we also have a lot of folks here who would like to receive something in the mail. Um, and we tried that with the Berwick Quarterly. We've moved on to the Berwick Bi-Monthly, which seems to have been um, you know, a success story. And what we have come up with is the Berwick Daily. And our outward-facing website will continue to have all of the useful things, pay my taxes, you know, need to find out information from code. Dog, that's good. Dog licenses. Dog licenses. Yep. But um, at the top, <coughs> it will link to have, have kind of like a, a blog that will be the Burbank Daily. And it will have rotating, always updated, new information coming from all town departments and um, also live on its own on the, on the website as a kind of a almost newspaper of sorts with, with the town information of what's current. But it's a way of keeping the website. I mean, we, we looked at a lot of design stuff and Elise is here and can certainly speak to design if, if you know, this is part of this conversation. Um, but, but, uh, revise our town the 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 uh, company that does their town website. We have a um, redo built into our contract with them anyway, and I think it's time, regardless, to look at updating the website, which is clunky and and does not. This is very difficult to find stuff, and it's it all looks different. And it's trying to pull it all together, but we also believe that that this model which, to be honest with you, was sort of the direction we were heading in, but we're seeing uh, Rochester is doing this, and they're doing a beautiful job. It's called the Rochester Post. It's an app. It's, it's their, it's, look up the Rochester Post. It looks like a newspaper, but it's all the town departments with all their information. It's about three posts a day, and I think it's, it's an, a really elegant, forward-thinking way to communicate with, with the town, and it takes the heat off of all these town departments trying to, keep up with Facebook, and posting on Facebook, and responding on Facebook, and brings it back to the town. And this is, was the struggle for a long time, is trying to figure out what that looked like, and you know, researching what was going to make sense for us. But I think this is, this is a really good step forward. No, I like it. I think, like I said, I was going to circle back to the website anyways, and I think that's the next step, because I know it's something that I've talked about. I know it's something that when I sat down in Vision Berwick meetings, and I know, Jeremy, when you first came in, we talked about how everything really is. I mean, I moved to Berwick 12 years ago and couldn't navigate anything in the webpage then, and we still haven't updated it. So, uh, I mean, it's still not there, and I think Elise and Marie have both done a lot with trying to get the social media side and the digital side out, and so a huge thank you to what you guys do, too. Um, and, yeah, I think this is a nice way to try to get all that instead. Like you said, it's the department heads going, is it the official Berwick post? Is it trying to post something on the unofficial page? Yeah. Is it something trying to post something on rack? Is it trying to yeah. post noble baseball? Whatever it might be, it's 50 different spots for people looking for information right now. So having one spot would be definitely helpful. Still you, Jeremy. <laughs> 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 That's DC. Jeremy, yeah, like, like, yes. Three more things. 
That's it for That's DCPS. It? Yeah, good. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what else we got for miscellaneous? Public agencies. Public agencies. Oh, just wrap up uh, miscellaneous real quick. Um, Stormart Engineering, that pays for Christy Robasca. She's awesome. She helps us keep in compliance with uh, MS4. She's been our Stormart engineer for beyond a decade. Um, that covers miscellaneous. Then uh, transfers really quickly. That's the first page on tab 15. Public fire protection, that's in our PUC. Um, it's like our last page, yeah. Great case. <coughs> and 10,000 for contingency. And then really old water department bonds that will be paid off in a couple of years. Covered is really old, 30 years? Yeah, right. Yeah. 28 now. Late 90s. Really? Yeah. It's going to be over in 2026. So two more years. 30 year plan. Good night. So, so, so we go with transfers. Ready yeah. to go to public agencies? Yeah. Yeah, can we go back to emergency management for a minute? I thought when the Fire chief was speaking. He said ten thousand. Yeah, just, just it was six last year, but we can go to ten. I mean, I think it'll be put to good use. Yeah, no, I I thought it was seven. I'm just it's looking 10. at it. it says yeah, we told him ten. Yeah, right. I think we said ten. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's know. Put it to ten. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Go ahead. No. So for. Public agencies, this one's always a little challenging on who gets picked and why. Oh, yeah. That's all right. Did Coast Bus give us any updated numbers? Is that what you handed out earlier? Yep, that's in the pack on the, on the back. Oh, so, yeah. I still think about that view that we had with Coast Bus. And just like basically, they were asking, they're like, we're gonna need more money because just the way everything's working out. I'm like, okay. And they're like, they're like, yeah, we're gonna need like 25% more. I'm like, okay. And like, well, we already you pay 25 now. It's gonna go up to like 32. I'm like, it doesn't seem like a very big increase in the long scale of an entire town budget of 20 million dollars <laughs> or whatever. And he was just being so. He was so timid about it. He just like like I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask. I'm like ask for as much as you want. The town will either agree or they won't. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's how this works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> ask for whatever. Yeah, like we'll put up to a vote, and the town will decide if they want to or not. And if they don't want to, then you don't have to ride your buses here. Anymore, <laughs> you know, it's like, what it comes down to really, you know. Yeah. But it was just it was like. Yeah, it was like an hour long meeting for them to be like, we're going to need like $7,000 more. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> sure, put it in the budget. We'll put it on the ballot. <laughs> hmm. Looks like they're actually requesting less from us. Yeah. Yeah. No, I scared them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, James scared them. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> Uh, hey, well, last year or the year before, we had a couple food banks that had wanted funding. Do we hear from any of them this year? No, actually, I okay. don't have any here. Uh, I can go through. There's one, two, three, there's five. Uh, one of them's Caring Unlimited. Do you see what is a user number? A what? A user, a user number? Yeah, for Coast. That's what I was looking for. Is how many people are actually using it? Oh, so Coast. Coast. Um. Mm -hmm. service miles. And then I keep track of individual people. Well, how many people do they pick up? 
Yeah, they should have that data. I don't see that it says, but they probably should. <coughs> I think they do ship yards sometimes with that. That's what most of it is. But. Yeah. That is a good question, though. James, can we ask them to see if they, if they even document it? I would think. When people on board, they have to swipe their card or pay in cash, and they have to yeah. have some sort of record of how many people are using it. Yeah, Let's say uh, DR ridership represents the average ADA <coughs> ridership by originating community. Well. They, I think they have to have that number because they, I'm pretty sure it was in that presentation they gave to me and James. So yeah, I can, I can get it. I can, I can get it. I wonder if that number is right, though. Maybe it is. Six start ridership. Twelve people. Yeah, that would, wouldn't be many people, would it, for $32,000? That's what I'm, that's what I'm asking. Where is it? Wait right here. They got 12. You got 12 people taking it. Um, well, I saw, the, I saw the 12, but I right thought that can't be right. Oh. Yeah, fix, fix route ridership. Yeah, 2000. One hundred and thirteen. Wait, what? But it's um. If you look at the graph, yeah, yeah, you have the DR ridership, which is um, ADA. That's twelve. Yeah, and then over in number four, fixed mm -hmm. route ridership, two thousand one hundred thirteen represents estimates of those riders by originating community okay. at road coast fixed route services in fiscal 21 through 23 the other day. So I guess the question though is that the average or is that the total for those three years? I don't know. Looks like it's a total. So. Isn't Just ADA people that need yeah, meet qualification. That's not talking seven hundred people. It's far different than twelve. <laughs> yeah, it's a big difference in twelve. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if those are people that have like purchased like an annual pass or a monthly pass. And I wonder if those same people. Or shipyard people, because the shipyard is asking for. Um, Generally, the the uh, funds for the, parking. the park and ride people they take they take different <coughs> shuttle buses, so they actually don't. They're provided by the shipyard. They have little, these little money buses around, or they encourage them to carpool. So you park three cars here, get into one car, and go to the shipyard. Yeah. So. This year, where it says, you know, how many of we were saying that some of these numbers may be the shipyard. Well, if that's the shipyard, and they're asking for thirty-two thousand to cover coast, if the majority of the riders are shipyard, where does that play in for the shipyard association? Is that just for the parking lot? That five hundred. Five hundred is for the shipyard association. That does what? It. Uh, they uh, their missions to keep the shipyard um, open. Yes. The lobby Congress to not close it down. I guess. Well, yeah. But what is it doing for Berwick? Is it? I, I always assumed it was part of that. I get an invite to the to the commandant's ball in the. That's right. But did you yeah. go? No. no. We well, should have got <laughs> some of our money back, Noah. Don't have any time to go. <laughs> Also, I'm a vegetarian. If I show up, they're just like, oh, oh so am I. That's weird. You. Sorry. The last two Both years, of us are on, on meeting nights. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I haven't even looked at it. I get the invitation. I'm like, oh, what a nice card. And that <laughs> ends up on the floor of my car. I'd like to know if, if, and just pure curiosity, if they do break it down to how the ridership here, <laughs> is it 
is the 2113 is that is that fix people who actually pay for a pass like a monthly pass or an annual pass or is that their people just buying a ticket or getting on once in a while and and that's their total is there a way to know how many people you know got on right out here in front of the town hall? I know it, it, and um, maybe they don't have I, they they a lot of money um, yeah. I think they probably do they but must know they just, just don't want to tell us right yeah just reach out and just See if you can get the numbers. All right, we're, we're not going to change anything here, but just right. you know, just just for our own edification later down the line. Yeah, domestic uh, violence. Is that carrying car limited? Yeah. So they serve twenty-two individuals. And the cost of carrying twenty-eight thousand nine hundred eighty-one. So my thought process was it's, it'd be hard to fully f fully fund Coast Bus and not fund Caring Unlimited. I mean, we didn't, oh, yeah. you know, I just. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that would be crazy. Yeah. I don't know if there's an upper limit the board wants to set. We are probably should have some methodo methodology to help yeah. these types yeah. of decisions. There should be a, a max amount that did needs to be divided up. Year? We did not. No. Who's carrying a I don't, do you, anybody know of the program? I, yeah. I know someone that I, my wife actually used Caring Unlimited after she, yeah, she had an issue when she was younger. And it's she, program. it was there for her, yeah. It's used widely throughout York County, especially in some of the schools. Wa watching towns. at home, sorry for mentioning you personally, but. Thank you. <laughs> She'll be in bed by now, anyways. <laughs> So that one's the, and plus it, it with 22, it helped 22 of our residents. Oof. I mean, you think about the ratio view. for that compared to the ratio of ridership for the coast bus. I know, right? They should get a lot more money. Yeah. No, uh, what? Pope Memorial Humane Society, they're there for our animal control. So I think they're pretty essential to our day to day operations. Are they the ones that do Barwick's animal control? They work with our animal control officer. So if we need assistance with a pet, they're our, they've been our go to. Okay. Assistance with an animal issue that they can help out with. James, you were saying about the. Uh food banks, that the, there, there's five of them, that, that they didn't apply for any funding, or did they, they just didn't request any? No. No. Last year, York County wanted mm -hmm. like $45,000 or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think we had two last year. I don't... I, mm. So this totals up. I mean, it would be good so to help, you know, to make sure that we're helping for our residents. Total. Which one? For which one? Just in general. Because we kind of lumped it all in the one thing. Yeah, we did. La uh, last year was 31,260. Oh, excuse me. It was uh, 32,460. 32. Okay. It's about a $7,000 increase. Which pretty much. Oh, which one is the seven thousand increase? No, uh, no twenty three. It was thirty two four sixty. Oh this yeah, is okay. Total these is thirty nine three eighty five. <coughs> so do we want to add? In Caring Unlimited? Yeah, I do. I'd be okay with that. Are you? Yeah. All right, so we can add that in for their requested support amount, I think is appropriate. And James, the Cornerstone VNA 
that's right. That's They've right. asked for 6360. You're recommending 5,000. Is that based on numbers you've seen? No, we recommend They're just the flat funding it, just what? as a starting point. No. They uh, yeah. He recommended doing the whole thing. Last year we only did 5,000. Uh, no, town manager, are you looking at this new one? Oh, Julius. Yeah, you don't have the latest, oh. Mike. Nope, nope, I didn't look all the way over. <laughs> I yeah. got you. So, James, I'm sorry, what did you say? The 5,000 is just, would be just flat funding it. I think, I think that's last what we year, last year too. requested like 9,000. I think they asked for more last year, too, and we said five was right. a good. Okay. So it was just that. like uh, what they had presented was like how many residents actually used the program Correct. and things like that. And right. Couldn't get to that one. And the shipyard association is something that I mean predates. Been doing it for a uh, while. Yeah, that's why I'm yeah. curious. Is if it? I'd like more explanation as to what that is. Is it the parking? Is it the? Oh, I know it, it's got it's got very little or nothing to do with the parking. Um, let's see, the Shipyard Association is a nonprofit organization of individuals, businesses, and communities dedicated to the continued existence of the shipyard and maximizing opportunities for its growth as a center of excellence in marine development. And it just goes into how it they promote the expansion of the shipyard. Only pay for those things well, with the taxes that keep yeah. the shipyard open. Yeah, yeah. kind of what I thought. I say no, it doesn't get a meal next year. <laughs> I mean, but it is also an innocuous amount as well. It's hard to. I don't know. Mm. I'd like to know a better idea of where it's going. Yeah. Yeah, it isn't that much, but. It's enough to pay for somebody to go out there and get donations. Is what it is. <laughs> self, the self-recurring position. You go out, you yeah. get donations from towns, and you fund your own position, and that's your job is to go get funding from towns. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the Coast Bus, they're asking for thirty-two, one seventy-two, and you're recommending twenty twenty-nine. You just put the difference. Is that what you did of the increase? Uh, I was. Kind of, I mean, this is just to get the ball rolling on discussions. I was thinking maybe take some of that, you know, Kerrigan Unlimited money from them and then kind of reallocate. And it is kind of meeting them in the middle. As you know, I it, recall, it like, the way that they're, what they had said was, like, the way their funding breaks down is it's not on our schedule also. Yeah. So, like, like our, our budget starts in July and goes through June and everything like that, but, like, theirs is, like, November or January or whatever, so like their increase wouldn't be the same as like it wouldn't come out to be exactly the right level as well. Weird like that. Okay. So that would bring us under under forty for total, which is about a seven thousand dollar increase from last year. Oh, so you guys are keeping some of these still on the table? You no? Know? I thought we had taken one off, a couple off. Which one did you think came off? I thought, well, I thought Coast. I mean, if it only, I thought we were going to try to get some numbers. Didn't seem like they were. Oh, yeah. No, no, this is only the presentation. We're not approving. <coughs> Eight cats, three dogs, three guinea pigs, one rabbit, a hamster, and a rat. For what? From Berwick. Oh. <laughs> okay. From the Humane Society. Got it. I guess so. All right. I think, I think James, pending getting more information on those two things, I, I mean, I'm all. Yeah, I'm okay with that as a preliminary number. Okay, yeah, I can come back. Let's involved. Okay, that's public agencies. Um, last, and certainly not least, is uh, capital improvements.
I could just Here it is. Go, th <laughs> go through it. Um, ahead, James. So from the first um, cut, had to reduce some things. Um, just to make sure we're staying in line with the actual spendable fund balance. So I'll just go through for fire. The aero replacement, um, we're saving for, to replace a truck. So we've been doing that for the past couple of years. And this is a pretty typical request from fire to um, replace equipment as it's needed. The CAX DOT match, that just goes to grants. It's to help match grants. So typically we can go out some grants, um, typically they're 20%, sometimes they're 10% matches. Uh, with the police, it's, uh, we're moving, trying to move towards vehicle uh, outright purchasing rather than leasing. So this will be the first year where we out outright purchase a cruiser. Um, similar to fire, there's allowance there for equipment and then to upgrade their security system. For public works, combining 500000 from undesignated fund balance and $300,000 from the taxpayers, so it'll be $800,000 again for roads. So we're not, we're not going up at all from last year? It is up. Uh, I believe what it was... We, what did we do last year? Two fifty. But what was the total last year? Oh, the total? <coughs> total was 800. So, so that is the same as last year. Okay. We're budgeting the same, but we're mm -hmm. taking, taking it from less different spots. From, yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. Right. Uh, fuel control and pump, those are for um, the fueling stations at Public Works. There's some equipment there that's trending towards becoming obsolete. And uh, CIP funding for Memorial Field um, on the back page has a breakdown of Memorial Field projects, including what we have left for this fiscal year. Uh, we have impact fees that will continue to, to come in. So for this fiscal year, it's paving the Tennis, pickleball court, basketball court, striping them, soundproofing on the fencing, the fencing itself, and then fence improvements, um, ADA fence improvements for the Sweet Street entrance, and then adding an emergency gate access on the Sullivan Street side. And for fiscal year 25, um, we need to run electrical properly to both school boards, get some LED lights installed, work on a design for the Memorial Field building, so be a new building. And the goal would be get a design and concept down and then go, go after some grants for a new building. So there's, there's funding in there to start the establishment of a walking circuit. So at this, try to lay some gravel down and start. There's a proposed circuit for around. So none of these projects here, the 25, have been done. So when we were talking to REC, these are still outstanding, but do they intend to be done? No, that's next year. 
in twenty in the twenty twenty five. Yeah. By it, right? Yeah. Right, but what I what I'm saying is is that like um curbing around the playground area and things like that. Yeah, that'd be so after so that'd be after July. After July, yep. And then the above the line here, so the paving and all that, yeah. we have money for that now. And that'll be ready to go as soon as we can do it. Okay. So the splash pad and the curbing and all that is designated to be done before the end of this summer, this year. No, no. The splash pad will not be done this summer. We're just we're just trying to take a next step to help establish it. So what the what need we need to do with like the basketball court? Yep. So there's a basketball court. We have to put a retaining wall at the end of that basketball court to okay. make room for the splash pad. And then there needs to be, we need to hook, so there's two drain lines. We need to run to the drainage we already put in. So the infrastructure is ready to go. We just have to tie into it. And then there's a like concrete pad. So that alone, we're probably already into over 25 grand. So we're just we're just trying to do some of the next steps to put us in a better position to be ready to install a splash pad. Okay. <coughs> Going back to the other page, uh, transfer station. Building reserve fund, and then town hall, the clock tower, the railing around the clock tower is rotted, so that needs to be replaced. Um, masonry restoration and waterproofing, a new security system for town hall, and then savings for the replacement of our front steps. And then some money for bathroom improvements. When you say savings, you mean you're going to set aside the money? Yep. <coughs> and it's not going to be for this year, but for a future year. Right. The idea would be saved for five years. I, that's just a little confusing because this is coming out of the undesignated fund. So you're taking money out of the undesignated fund essentially putting it into a savings account separate Doesn't so mean. that in three to five years you'll have enough money to redo the steps, right? Yep. Okay. It's just assigning it. Okay. So you're, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it seems weird to take money out of undesignated funds to keep it undesignated. Well, I mean, I guess you're designating it but not spending it. it just yeah, it's like only it. done on paper. Yeah. It, well, that's why it's confusing because you're not really doing anything. The money's not going anywhere. Right. It's just being moved around and shuffled. So. Do you know if, because um, I know this is the first year we're buying a vehicle outright for the police department. Do you know if looking forward, if Chief Town's going to try to put like 15 grand, 20 grand aside in each year so that like when he needs a new cruiser and he needs something, that money's already there. So then it's just $15,000 a hit each year versus coming up with 90 grand. He, he did talk about that. However, right now we purchase one vehicle one year, two vehicles in the next year. So Correct. to keep up with that cycle, we really have to re continue to replace these vehicles at that rate that's fine i mean i'm all for them paying it out right because it's going to save again it's saving us money long term versus leasing it but at some point trying to net that down a little bit so it's you not going to be you could probably do like the same amount or or close to the same average it over the uh, three vehicles over two years and have it the same amount each year yeah yeah, yeah and that's and that's all i'm getting at because we're going to end up saving money by not leasing them Right. And just buying them out. So just keeping him going, okay, if we keep putting that money in, right. even if we're paying, mm -hmm. you know, less as it goes, then it's just going to become that amount. <coughs> uh, 
that covers capital improvements. Yeah, that's all of them. <laughs> we <laughs> we <did it. laughs> that's all of them tonight. We did it. <laughs> all right. We may have put Betsy to sleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody else is done. <laughs> okay. So, unless there's any other questions on the budget, we're going to come out of recess, go into executive session, and everybody has to leave for that. <laughs> you think Lisa could read that list of animals one more time before we go? <laughs> <laughs>